My name is Mark Lance. Official title is VP, Incident Response and Threat Intelligence. My team specifically is responsible for forensics, incident response, and threat intelligence. And as part of that, we respond very frequently to things like ransomware, business email compromise, um, you know, performing everything from the investigation to the overall response methodology, as well as the threat actor communications. So you negotiate? Correct. We negotiate on clients' behalf uh, with the with the cyber criminals. What is it like being a ransomware negotiator? We have to deal with, you know, clients who are undergoing something that is is likely one of the most stressful times of their career. Um, very likely, there's been large impacts to the operations of their business. They might not necessarily be able to, to function as an organization. And so we're coming in to help them um, as the victims, they, you know, to work on their behalf working, you know, to communicate with these threat actors because, or these cyber criminals, because we have experience working with these groups and, and can help them ensure that they're going to get the most out of these, uh, these negotiations. Typically, how does GuidePoint get involved? So in most circumstances, the way this occurs is clients start identifying or, or noticing that there are ransom notes on systems in their environment that have been impacted. And as part of that, they would then reach out because, you know, they're they realize that they've been impacted by ransomware and need assistance, whether it's for, you know, performing the investigation to figure out how they got in, but also what they should be doing as next steps. So in terms of your priorities as negotiators, what are the first things you want to get accomplished? The first thing we need to do is we need to work with the client so that they understand what to expect. Like if they don't make contact with the threat actor or the cyber criminals, this is what they can expect to occur. Uh, once they do make you know, contact with them, what the duration or how long they can expect the negotiations to be. But really the, the kind of core thing that we need to do with clients almost immediately and upfront is establish what their strategy and what they're trying to get out of this is. So it could be because they strictly want to delay um, until they can perform more of an investigation and a business impact analysis. It could be that maybe they have already determined there might be an appetite or a necessity to, to pay a ransom. So we're working with them very, very early on to understand you know, what they're trying to get out of this. And then we can establish the strategy of how we're That's communicating right. um, based on, on that information. A lot of these these attacks involve, you know, crippling networks, essentially. But there's also a data extortion component in some cases where the threat actor, as you call them, uh, is threatening to release private information unless a ransom is paid. When it when it comes to data extortion, what do you counsel your clients to do? Uh, I imagine, you know, like law enforcement generally says, you know, you don't pay ransoms to ransomware attackers. Is that is that your approach? Yeah, I mean, it's it's our opinion that if you don't have a necessity or, or you don't need to pay a ransom, we don't recommend paying it. We don't want to fund these cyber criminals. To your point, modern day ransomware, though, is not just about the operational impact where systems are encrypted and you can't access them anymore. Prior to that occurring, um, modern ransomware, in most circumstances, they're getting into the environment and they're stealing what they believe to be sensitive information. So even if you are able to recover your systems through backups or you know restore from, from other systems, they're still going to try to get you to make the ransom payment based on the fact that they're going to release the sensitive information if you don't. Have you had incidents where the client has decided to pay a ransom? Absolutely. Um, it's it's quite frequent that, that clients will actually um, make a ransom payment. And there's a lot of what they would believe business justifications to why they might do that. It could be that you know they don't have access to their systems any longer and they need to pay so they can get access to the decryption capabilities so that they can recover and restore them system, their systems that will allow them to function as a business. Um, we've seen other instances where they don't necessarily want the information that was taken from the environment leaked out on the dark web. And so in order to you know, prevent that information from being disclosed, they can work with external counsel and, and disclose on their own terms based on the, on the advice of legal counsel. We've even seen other instances, though, where it might be more cost effective for them to actually pay the ransom. Uh, we worked an instance where if they continue to wait and try to recover from backups, 
it would have taken substantially longer and they were incurring basically a million dollars a day by being down. But then by paying a $2 million ransom, they were able to start the recovery process within three to four days. So it was actually more cost effective for them to, to consider ransom payment. The reason that ransomware is so relevant right now and has been for the last couple of years is it's extremely lucrative for these threat actors. They are making millions and in some cases, billions of dollars. So this isn't a problem that, that, that is necessarily going to get, go away. And they continue to evolve and transform their methods to be more effective to ensure that they are going to get paid. Have you had experiences with schools and school districts that have been attacked by ransomware threat actors? Certainly, we see where certain groups um, will target certain industries. Other groups have a, a code of ethics where as part of their you know, affiliate programs will say, you can't target specific industries. And so we know that they won't hit education or they won't hit healthcare. Now, other cyber criminal groups might see advantages of specifically hitting those industries or those verticals because they realize there's a sense of urgency to, to get services back online and for people to be able to, you know, recover and provide services and that there's a sensitive sensitivity of the information that they hold. These are very well organized, sophisticated groups. Um, you know, these aren't kids in their basement somewhere. Um, this is big business, as you mentioned. So I imagine they're they're constructed like businesses and corporations as well. Yeah, these are cyber criminal organizations that have similar structure to what you would expect from other business. Um, they've got, you know, development and engineering teams that work on the platforms and the malware that they use. They've got support teams where if somebody does make a ransom payment and the decryption doesn't work effectively, you can work with their support team to troubleshoot and make sure you can actually decrypt. They've got financial analysts who are trying to understand, you know, how much should the ransom amount be based on the market cap of the company. So there's a lot of different tiers to these organizations, including, you know, PR teams, where if you go to their leak sites, they'll say, hey, if you'd like to speak with us, you know, please reach out here. We also see where they're posting, you know, jobs out on the dark web and receiving CVs or, or resumes for people where they want to interview them. Um, you know, their affiliate programs have very strict requirements where you have to have references if you're going to work as a, as a service. So again, these are very sophisticated, you know, organized crime, uh, you know, organized crime groups versus, you know, what would be, you know, individuals working by themselves in most circumstances. So this isn't going away anytime soon, I imagine. Unfortunately not. They're they're making a ton of money. Um, they're extremely effective and there's there's plenty of victims out there for them to take advantage of.